Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Guess what we have today? We have a story of a gigantic, and let me say it again, a gigantic Bigfoot that was stumbled across drinking in a creek by two eyewitnesses. Now, first of all, I'd like to say this story was brought to my attention by a viewer named Jim Watts. So, Jim, we thank you for this story. This is crazy. Wait until you guys hear how big this Bigfoot was. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to tell it to you. Let's do it. King County, Washington, Rattlesnake Ridge, July 1998, approximately 1 p.m. In the month of July 1998, my friend Jesse and I went on a hiking trip at Rattlesnake Ridge to collect rocks for Jesse's geology class at Seattle University. We reached the gravel parking lot around 1300, which is 1 p.m. At the beginning of the trailhead, there is a lake that is very active with waterfowl and occasional birds of prey. Normally, this trailhead is semi-popular and we noticed there were only three other cars in the lot at that time. Looking back now, I can say that this particular day was odd and that we noticed no animal or bird activity, which normally is abundant around the lake at the trailhead. Everything was strangely quiet and an ominous feeling seemed to loom everywhere. In fact, Normally, both Jesse and myself are quite talkative when we hike, and even we said very little to one another. Both of us had packed lunch in our backpacks, along with our usual flashlights, waterproof matches, extra batteries, two walkie-talkies, one cell phone, and one first aid kit. I was armed with my knife that is attached to my rucksack on the shoulder strap, as well as an AK 9mm pistol which I keep in my fanny pack. We started our hike on the regular trailhead until we reached the opposite side of the lake. At this point, we exited the regular trail and began ascending up the mountain, moving diagonally towards the rock face of the mountain ridge. After approximately 20 minutes, we came upon a small creek that flowed downhill towards the lake. We decided to follow the stream upward as it seemed to be going in the direction of our destination. We followed the stream for approximately another 15 minutes until we ran across an animal trail that was also going in the direction we were heading. However, the animal trail was moving diagonally and had fewer obstructions in our path, both of which made it easier to move up the mountain. Other than our own heavy breathing, we could hear nothing. We said nothing as we continued our ascent. We continued on for what seemed like only 10 minutes when we began to hear a loud slurping sound ahead of us. We both looked at one another with a what the hell type of expression on our faces while continuing upward. The slurping grew louder and now we could hear what sounded like a sigh in between each slurp. At this junction the creek hooked around and behind a hill in front of us and out of sight. Our trail would intersect with the creek once again just over the hill. At this time in the hike Jesse was ahead of me by approximately 8 to 10 feet. Suddenly, as we came over this hill, Jesse froze in his steps, and I came up behind him, alerted by his actions. As I approached him from his six, I looked over his shoulder and also saw what he was looking at. In front of us, and only 20 feet from our position, I saw what at first I thought was a huge bear drinking from the creek. As my brain tried to categorize the animal I was looking at, I suddenly realized that directly under its glutes, were a pair of huge feet, not hooves or paws, but actual feet, each having five toes. The feet were a dusty gray color with the same texture of the bottom of a dog's paw. As it knelt down, the glutes were as large as a Clydesdale ass, and I'm not kidding. With the exception of the soles of the feet, this creature was covered in four to five inches in length with dark brown, almost black hair. Its hair on his butt was all matted and it looked like he had sat in a wet cow pie. Under his butt I could clearly see testicles and I knew it was a male. We stood there frozen with fear. I could not feel my legs and my skin crawled from the adrenaline running through my blood. I remember my mouth going dry and feeling numb all over my face and mouth. The smell of this animal was indescribable. It was absolutely horrible and I could feel my gag reflexes twitching as I badly wanted to vomit. Jesse's face was beet red 
and his eyes were watering as his hand was over his mouth also to hold back the noxious feeling we had. He then tried to back up pushing me back also. We both tried to regain our balance while still keeping an eye on this thing. It must have hurt us moving because suddenly in one quick motion it jumped to its feet and spun around facing us in a defensive posture. As it did this it made a loud bark type of sound that seemed to make the trees shake. It stood there with its fists clenched and its arms raised in front like a boxer. Its lips were curled, bearing these huge horse-like teeth as it glared directly at us and breathed heavily. The bottom half of his face was dripping with creek water and his eyes were black like a shark's eyes. I stood there frozen out of fear and amazement at this animal's sheer size and agility. I am six foot two and I only came up to his midsection. I can only guess that this animal was between 10 and 12 feet in height. It was much higher than a basketball rim and towered over us like we were children. I remember briefly thinking of grabbing my weapon, but even if I was able to empty my whole clip into him, he was still close enough to have been able to get at us before he was neutralized. Therefore, all three of us just stood there for a good minute and a half or so and studied one another. I was absolutely in amazement at the incredible size of this creature. I remember every detail clearly as if it was yesterday, and I will attempt to describe the proportions of the creature the way I seen it. First of all, the feet on this creature were massive and approximately 20 or more inches in length. The toenails and fingernails were dark colored with an orange tint to them. The creature did not have one ounce of fat on his entire body and I could see the vascularity of every muscle that seemed like they would have straighted if it weren't for the hair that covered them. The calves were twice the size of my own head and his quads were as big as tree trunks and swept out like a bodybuilder's. I'm not kidding, those legs looked like they could squat a full size Dodge pickup truck. The glutes were huge and muscular and very high like a track runner's. They tied into those enormous hamstrings that gave the animal a very explosive look, like it could sprint at very high speeds. The waist was narrow and very powerful and solid looking. Above that I could see these huge lats that flared out under his arms. His pectorals were wide and bulky looking. They were so big that they came up to his chin. I couldn't see any neck at all, but his traps and deltoids were what really caught my attention. First of all, the delts were as big as beach balls, and connected to them were these huge traps that flared out and upward. They went from his deltoids to his ears. The top of his head was conical, and these bulky muscles steamed down from the tip of his cranium to the traps kind of like the back of a gorilla's neck. Now the face was not like an ape at all. It really looked like a Neanderthal in the facial features. The face had less hair than the rest of its body, all except for these thick eyebrows that pointed upwards. He had no hair around his eyes or nose. The forehead was sloped and the eyebrow ridges protruded out and under them were these deep eye sockets that sank deep in its skull. The cheekbones were very wide and high and below them was this deep, powerful looking jawline. The nose had a ridge to it like a human nose and the nostrils flared out and forward. They weren't pointed down like a human nostril would be. When the lips relaxed a bit I could see that he really didn't have any upper lip at all. It was very thin and his bottom lip was larger. The mouth all over was very wide as was his face. His arms were huge and bulky and you could see his triceps bulging out and his biceps looked like bowling balls. His forearms were abnormally long and they too were bulging with muscles. His knuckles were huge and the color of his skin was a cross between black and gray. Believe me, trying to describe this creature does not even begin to do it justice. I wish I could somehow download this picture from my brain and put it on a screen to show you his enormous proportions. In 1993, I shot a 1200 pound bull elk near Yakima. The creature we saw that day had twice the muscle mass as my elk did and I guarantee you he weighed no less than 1500 pounds with a maximum weight of 2500 pounds easily. Finally we had enough 
and the urge to leave grew very strong. We began backing down the trail, keeping our eyes glued on the creature the entire time except to look where we were going periodically. As we backed away, his arms dropped to his sides and he opened his mouth and let out a soft and deep bellowing sound, kind of like the gurgling moan sound that a male lion does to declare his territory. <laughs> Long after he was out of sight, we could hear this bellowing as we began a rapid descent down the mountain. When we reached the opening at the bottom near the lake, we opened into a full sprint all the way to the car. We drove all the way to Bellevue, Washington before we stopped for a coffee to try to collect our thoughts. We didn't know how to begin to tell anyone what we had just seen. I don't think I would have believed our own story if I hadn't seen it for myself. Wow, are you crazy? I mean, good lord, just imagine seeing a creature like that, you guys. 10 to 12 feet tall, like probably five times the size of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh my goodness gracious, that would be unbelievable. I, I just can't believe, I, I mean, that's just so hard to fathom, a creature that, that size. Now, the creature I saw in my, not my expedition, but my encounter was probably about almost seven feet tall. And to me, the silhouette that I saw was huge. So just imagine the creature that these guys are talking about. Unbelievable. And from the way they're talking here, talking about their six and 1300 hours, seems to me that they're military. So they know what the heck they're talking about, right? I just can't believe that. I mean, I believe it, believe me, but it just blowing my mind how big of a creature that would be. I mean, 1,500 to 2,500 pounds, 10 to 12 feet tall. Good Lord. I mean, that is the definition of the boogeyman. <laughs> like, like, oh my God. Like, good Lord. If you, I don't even know what I would do if I ran into a creature like that. Thank God that creature was not, you know, territorial or mean-spirited or whatever because if he was these guys in my opinion would not be around to tell that story he could have easily dispatched both of them with the size and according to like his uh, hamstrings how fast he must have been and all that other stuff Wow all right so once again we're gonna thank Jim Watts the a viewer appreciate that Jim for bringing this story to my attention and uh, hope you guys like the story if you did make sure you hit that like button Hit that subscribe button for me if you're new. Hit that you know bell notification, all that good stuff. Leave me some comments. And hey, do me a favor. Share the video for me. Sharing the video definitely helps me. All right, that's where we're going to leave it. So until next time, always remember, where there is a will star, there is definitely a way. And we'll see you guys later. Take care.